is recorded by Jewish historian Josephus that Emmaus and Jerusalem could well be the place earlier called Ayalon, the place where the sun stood still until General Joshua's battle with the Amorites ended in victory. On the third day after Pesach Passover in the year 4 BCE, something also happened there that day. Two men, distressed, discouraged, and defeated at the terrible death of their leader and friend, Yeshua Jesus of Nazareth, walked back home to Emmaus village from the terror of that day three days ago. As they walked on the road discussing the events, they were joined by a man who didn't seem to know of recent events in Jerusalem, but who did seem to have answers to the man's pointed questions about the event, explaining who the Messiah was from Moses. This is the path we tread, the ancient path from Moses to Messiah, tracing our steps from the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith to the road of Emmaus village to the 21st century today. Rev Media presents The Road to Emmaus Village. Studies of the complete gospel from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, to the Torah, Nebiim, and Ketubim, to Messiah in the Brit Hadashah, in the Hebraic perspective of our Christian faith. This is the continuing account of that happy day. As they came to Cleophas Alpheus' house, they bade him stay the night and sit with us at the evening meal. Then the man took up the piece of matzah, made a baraka, blessed the father for the meal, broke it and handed it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened. Then the man disappeared. They leapt to their feet, headed toward the door, talking excitedly, saying, Didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us on the road? Opening up the Tanakh to us, we must tell the others. They raced back toward Jerusalem to tell the eleven and the rest of their brethren huddled together at an upper room away from the Roman authorities. At High Helon, where the long overnight battle of Joshua ended in the defeat of the Amorites, the sun stood still as a witness to the victory won there. At Amaus, in proclamation of his victory, Yeshua Jesus opened the eyes of the men to who he is down through history from Moses, the Messiah of Israel. There we believe that time and eternity met when Messiah bridged the connection between his eternal I am and his divine conquest and victory as the risen son of God on earth. Walk with us on our journey in the road to Amaus village. Shalom, Yom Tov, good day. With thankful hearts, we bless Abba, our Father, His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Also, thanks to our friends who have encouraged us and continually pray with us to put together this weekly Yeshua-centered Messianic educational TV program, The Road to Amaus Village, which goes on the air Saturdays every Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Bereshit, or Genesis 2-3, Shabbat blessings be upon us, you, your family, and Kehila. Let us now honor Abba and set this day apart with this prayer. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and preserved us and enabled us to reach this season. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, Amen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Shehecheyanu, vekeyemanu, vehizeyanu, lasman hase, bashem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. As it was on the road to Amaus, so must we let the Jewish Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach, walk with us, so that we may fully understand through his Hebraic perspective, his teachings, and correctly in context apply this to our lives and realize. Didn't our hearts burn inside us as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us? 
long prevented from knowing Jesus and all his Jewishness. We were like air plants hung in the air with no roots. We had no idea that Jesus Yeshua was Torah observant, that he knew the Shema by heart, the Hadiberut, the Ten Commandments, that he was a Shabbat keeper, and observed the Moedim feast, that he was kosher, and many other things that he did and taught that we didn't see without the Hebraic perspective. And so to be Talmudim or true disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach, we must set our hearts to study the Torah, to be rooted in the Hebraic roots of our Christian faith. Last week we said we will learn more about the Torah. Yeshua and the Torah. Yeshua and the Shema. In Matthew 4, at the first instance just before starting his so-called public ministry, Yeshua led by the rock Hakodesh into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, Hasatan, used passages in the Torah from Devarim or Deuteronomy several times. Starting with Devarim, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, he said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Secondly, Devarim 6.16, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And Devarim 6.13, 10.20, begun, Hasatan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This makes some scholars say Yeshua's favorite Torah section is Hadevarim. Seriously. He knew it by heart to use as a sword against the enemy. Remembering what the Lord spoke to Joshua in Joshua 1.8, this book of the law, referring to the Torah, shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Be careful to do what is written. Then you will have success. We see it in this account, then the devil left Yeshua and behold, angels came to minister to him. Thus, in Matthew 22, 33, when the crowds heard how he taught, they were astounded. But when the Peroshim, the Pharisees, learned that he had silenced the Sedukim, the Sadducees, they got together and one of them, who was a Torah expert, a scribe asked a shihila, a question about the Torah to trap him. Rabbi, which of the mitzvot, the commandments in the Torah, are the most important? In Mark's parallel version of this account, chapter 12, 28 to 31, Yeshua answered, The most important is, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you are to love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Quoting once again, Devarim, Deuteronomy 6.4. And the second is this, quoting Vayikra or Leviticus 19.18, You are to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeshua answered correctly because Joseph, his earthly father, who was also Torah of servant, being a Jew, obeyed to teach these words of the Shema and the Torah diligently to his son. Among the Jews, by the time a boy is 12, he goes through a rite called Bar Mitzvah where he is acknowledged to have read studied and been trained in the Torah, and passes from boyhood to manhood as the son of the commandment. Then he is off to help his parents in their work or go to yeshiva, school, if he is a serious Torah student. The Hebrew word shama means hear and obey. Not like in English or Filipino, hear simply means listen, makinig. In the Hebraic perspective, hearing means obeying at the same time. The proclamation of the Shema is central to the Hebraic faith. Unlike other pagan idolatrous nations surrounding Israel with many gods, their worship focuses on the one eternal God of Israel, the God of their fathers, El Shaddai, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzhak, the God of Yaakov, the God of the living, whom they are to love wholeheartedly by obeying his Torah. Question, are you loving God with all of your heart? all of your soul, all of your might, according to the Torah? Spread the word. Tell family and friends to watch this program, The Road to Amaos Village, Hebraic Roots of Our Christian Faith, From Moshe to Messiah in the Balance. Find out more as you watch this program every Shabbat, Saturdays at this time. Next week, our study of the Hebraic Roots of Our Christian Faith will seek more answers to the questions, Was Yeshua a Torah or lawbreaker? Yeshua and the Shabbat is the Torah for Christians. 
for our next portion, Meet the Messianic Rabbis, with us is our dear friend and true yoke fellow, one in Messiah from New Jersey, New York, USA, to help us open our eyes to today's parasha, Akarei Mot, after the death and Kedushim, the Holy Ones, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. Stay tuned. Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men, teaching the Route 66 Kings Highway from Genesis through to Revelation. Three brief overview sections in relation to this particular parash reading. Section 1, the Torah. Section 2, how this parash fits in the New Testament. Section 3, for our future and the end of days and our Messiah's return. Shalom Mishpoka. Welcome to another teaching. This one is also, we're going to uh, tie together two particular parashas, uh, Acharit and Mot and Kedoshim, this is from Leviticus chapter 16 through Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. This is, uh, these particular parashas, we're going to focus just on a very small piece because it's so vitally important to understand just a small piece because by understanding the beginning, you will understand why Yeshua, our Messiah, Jesus, did what he had to do. In these particular parasha, we are going to talk about the Biblical Holy Day Feast, the one that we still keep called Yom Kippur, because if you read Leviticus 23, you will see that you are to do these uh, until the Lord comes back. But we're going to focus today on Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2 and 3. And this is talking about the high priest going into the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, this Day of Atonement. He would enter in at one time, going in there with specific clothing he would wear, specific garments that were specifically designed for that particular time, and they were made of linen, okay? He was to go into the holy place to go before his beloved Lord to be intimate with the Lord on that one time a year. Sort of like a marriage, when a husband and wife get married and only one that first night that they spend together. It is intimate, it is close, it is blood that is being spilled. But the other thing that we need to understand about this is that that high priest would go in to that place and there would be two animals, one that would be given for a sacrifice and then for him and one for the people. But then he would go outside, wash himself off, and then for the people, they would have two goats, two male goats that look very similar in size and shape and form. And then they would cast lots on what goat would be sacrificed to God and what goat would take away the sins of the entire nation into the wilderness. That God would release one to go to live another day. Okay? Now, you have that, and that's very, very very important to understand that the priest would go in, he would have linen garments, it would be once at one time, and that there would be two offerings, one for the people as a sin offering, and one that would take away the sins of the people, here in this particular parasha, this portion of the Torah. Now we go on to section two, and we look at the New Testament.
And we see an event that happened in the Gospel of Yochanan, John chapter 18, verse 38 through 40. There was a scene where Pilate, the governor, had whipped Yeshua, but it was, past, it was the time of the Passover. And he wanted to let one man go free. So he says to the people, do you want Baraba or Barabbas? Or do you want Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah? So there were two similar looking people because they were both Jewish, both similar looking people most likely, both men. And here it was this offering and the people had to choose one that would go for, for, to the cross for the sins and one that would be set free to live another day. Hmm. But now with our understanding of Leviticus and this parash reading. Remember, in the parash reading, in Leviticus chapter 16, we see that the high priest would go, linen garments, he would make atonement for himself, he would be washed clean. Now what did Pilate do in John chapter 18 and chapter 19? He washes his hands clean of this event. Okay, he's not, uh, I, I'm not the one who's doing this, you're the one who's choosing. Also, remember in Leviticus, how there were two scapegoats and that one would be sacrificed for the sins of the people and one would be let free. Now we have in John, Yochanan chapter 18, we have Pilate presenting two. One, we know as Yeshua, our Messiah, would take away the sins of the world by going to the cross. But there the fulfillment that we see in Leviticus of having the other one be set free is Barabbas, or what his real name was, is bar Abba. And that's even more in the names. Yeshua, which means salvation, and bar Abba, which means son of the Father. So do you want salvation, or do you want the son of the Father? Sort of like the Father in heaven, telling a little story right there in the names. But why is that even more important for our section three? To understand from the beginning, to understand the middle, to understand the end. Section three, the fulfillment of what other things are to come yet. Now, Yom Kippur is like the wedding day because the bride and groom now come together and become one. So it is that wedding day, that wedding feast that is so very special. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9, you see the words wedding feast. Those people who accept Yeshua, who follow his teachings, who follow the word of God, will then, in the end, be in heaven and be at the wedding feast of the Lamb. The wedding feast is like Yom Kippur, that intimateness with God by going to that holy place. The forgiveness of sin that you see in John chapter 18, and finally, you're given that linen garment at the wedding feast of the Lamb up in heaven. So here it is, everything being fulfilled to the T. But if you don't know the beginning, you really don't understand the end. Shalom.
Welcome back to the road to Amaus village. We now go to our discussion in the light of the Brit, the Torah in a balance. With me is Dr. Brother Manny Navarro, elder of Solid Torah Community. Shalom, Brother Manny. Shalom, How brother. How are you? Yes, fine. Thank you very much for being with us once again in My this uh, portion. After listening to Rabbi Andrew's teaching on Yom Kippur and the high priest, can you share your insights on this? Yom Kippur is, in English, the Day of Atonement. Yeah. So uh, we find the uh, rites and rituals of Yom Kippur explained in chapter 16 of Leviticus. Mm -hmm. But what is notable about uh, Yom Kippur is that that is the only time of the year that the Kohen Gadol, the high mm. priest, will enter the most holy place of the tabernacle. We recall that the tabernacle or the tent of meeting, the Mishkan, had two compartments. One was the holy place mm. and the one was the most holy place. The, the one which was called the most holy place was entered into only once one a year yes. yes by the high priest no mm. other priests was allowed to do that mm. uh, he would die instantaneously mm -hmm. okay. yeah as what had happened to the sons of aaron uh, Bilo and nadab when they okay. approached the presence of god in an unworthy manner or uh, they, that yeah. was not the prescribed way right some so. some commentaries say that they were drunk but what was mm -hmm. written in scriptures is they brought uh, strange fire in the strange King James fire, yes. version. It's strange fire. They brought it into the most holy place. Yes. Uh, so it, there certainly has to be a prescribed way on yes. approaching God as uh, found in the Torah. But um, in the book of Hebrews, um, the writer of uh, Hebrews has mentioned in uh, chapter 9, uh, verse 11, when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation. So how do we relate this to what has happened in, in uh, the physical Mishkan, the tabernacle, the temple even, well, and uh, what Christ had done? Only in many ways, the Mishkan uh, actually represents the human body. Mm -hmm. Uh, in chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, verse yeah. uh, 19, I believe. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, it says there Remember that our bodies, bodies are the now. temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You can think of the, the inner core of the human being, the heart of man, the inner man as being the sacred precinct of the most holy. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we accept Yeshua into our heart, uh, He comes in only once, and that is forever. We yes. remember in the yes. uh, Old Testament, in chapter 9, verse 6 of Hebrews, it says, The high priest alone enters once a year, once, yeah. not without blood. Mm -mm. But in the book of Hebrews, it says that it is Yeshua who enters into the tabernacle of God in heaven mm -mm. with blood, not of bulls and goats, not bulls and goats but his yeah. own but his blood. Own, very blood, right? Yes. He says here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, Hence, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you did not want, but you prepared a body for me. You did not approve of whole burnt offerings and sin offerings. Mm -hmm. Then I said, Look, I am come in the role of the book. It is written about me to do your will, O God. So he enters with his own body, with his own blood, and it is blood that does not only cover for sins, mm. the blood of bulls and goats uh, is limited in its effect. It just simply covers, but it does not take away the memory of those sins. While Yeshua's blood covers and rubs out yeah, and forever, for yeah. all eternity, ad olam, uh, all our sins yes. forevermore. And, and that's what makes Yeshua's blood uh, eternally efficacious for the sinner who will humble himself and accept Yeshua mm -hmm. into his heart, into the temple of his body as his Lord and Savior. Now, uh, in your community, um, do you celebrate Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement? And um, is this for us? Uh, well, yes, uh, simply because of the word atonement. Okay. Uh, Yom Kippur uh, reminds us of the atoning work of Yeshua 
on the cross. Of course, we don't offer the blood of bulls no, yeah, and goats yes. anymore. <laughs> of course. But all of these were pointing to the atoning sacrifice of Yeshua on Mount Golgotha mm -hmm. on the cross. So we celebrate Yom Kippur uh, because it is a very powerful reminder yes. of uh, what Yeshua did for us. Mm -hmm. Saving us and covering our sins with His blood and giving us or or making us righteous in his righteousness exactly. right yeah. thank you right. very much brother manny for that interesting discussion could i request you to lead us in a short prayer so our audience could uh, recognize yeshua as the high priest um, not entering a physical uh, tabernacle but um, the heavenly tabernacle yes my pleasure my dear television viewer um, you may have gone to many people because of the guilt that is in your heart, mm -hmm. because of a sin-laden life. But I tell you, there is one who died for you 2,000 years ago. He is the eternal high priest yes. who has made atonement for your sins, past, present, and future. If you wish to accept the peace that he offers you, not the peace that this world can never give, Accept him into your heart, into the temple of your body as your Lord and Savior. I will invite you to pray with me a short prayer of yes. acceptance. Shall we bow our heads? Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua Mashiach. Jesus Christ, I acknowledge that you are the only one who can forgive me of all my yes. sins, past, present, and future. That it is only your blood yes. and your blood alone yes. that can wash me free and clean of all the defilements, of all the dirt that is in my life. Oh, please come into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, my High Priest. Yes. Sit at the very core of my being, yes. inside me, and become my Lord and my Savior. Even at this moment, Yeshua, I thank you for your blood which washes away forevermore all my sins, past, present, and future. I thank you, Yeshua also for the eternal life that you have even at this moment granted to me amen yes. that was wonderful yeah we often quote um, 1 john 1 9 uh, if we confess our sins it's faithful and just yes. to That's cleanse us from all unrighteousness not oh. forgetting verse 6 which precedes it that it is by the blood of yes. yeshua thank you Mani, for sharing with us your thoughts on yom kippur and on Yeshua as the high priest through a Hebraic perspective. Until next Shabbat then, this has been your host, Brother Oni, extending to you Adonai's ironic blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Shavuot Tov, a blessed week ahead of you. Shalom. We worship you, O oh Lord, for oh, you alone are worthy to receive all honor and praise. You are highly exalted, Lord God Almighty. Sing out, O oh heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Bless the name. Yeshua, for He is the name above all names. Hallelujah, bless the name Yeshua. Messiah gave His life in my Hallelujah.